The Echoes began in Niles, Michigan in 1959 and later became Tom and the Tornadoes, with 12-year-old Tommy James, then known as Tommy Jackson, as lead vocalist. In 1962, while still students at Niles Public High School in Niles, Michigan, the group recorded its debut song, Long Ponytail. James renamed the band the Shondells in 1964 because it sounded nice, and to commemorate neighboring Fort Wayne's own Troy Shondell, who was famed for his 1961 hit, This Time. And this was the personnel for the band at the time. Tommy James on vocals and guitars, Larry Coverdale on lead guitar, Larry Wright on bass, Craig Villeneuve on keyboards, and Jim Payne on the drums. The band recorded the Jeff Berry, Ellie Greenwich song, Hanky Panky, in February of 1964, which was originally a B-side by the Raindrops. Even though James could frequently be spotted performing at Niles High School events, his popularity in the community grew. Although James' rendition of Hanky Panky sold well in Michigan, Indiana, and Illinois, Snap Records, the label under which Hanky Panky was first released, had no national distribution. The band toured the eastern Midwest, but the song was not well received in other markets. The record did not chart nationwide, and the Shondells dissolved in 1965 after the members had graduated from high school. After exploring a career outside of music, James formed the Coachman with Shondells guitarist Larry Coverdale and members of a competing band named The Spinners, and not the same Spinners from the 1970s that had a few hits. The Coachman toured a Midwest club circuit over the summer and fall of 1965, but as the gigs dried up, they returned to Niles in February of 1966 to plan their next move. Meanwhile, in 1965, Pittsburgh dance producer Bob Mack resurrected the lost song Hanky Panky, playing it at various dance events and telling it as an exclusive on local radio stations. The positive response from listeners prompted frequent play and demand skyrocketed. In response, bootleggers printed 80,000 black market copies of the recording, which were sold in Pennsylvania stores. James first became aware of all this activity in April of 1966 when he received a phone call from Pittsburgh disc jockey Mad Mike Metro inviting him to play the song. James sought to contact other Shondells members, but they had all moved away, joined the military, married, or quit the music profession entirely. In April 1966, James went out on his own to promote the Pittsburgh radio station, nightclubs, and on local television. As the new Shondells, he hired a quintet from Latrobe, Pennsylvania, named the Rackenders, at the Thunderbird Lounge in Greensburg. And these are the personnel from that band. Joe Kessler on guitar, Ron Rossman on keyboards, George McGurr on saxophone, Mike Vale on bass, and Vinnie Pietro Pali on drums. James traveled to New York City with a touring group to promote the song where he sold the master of Hanky Peggy to Roulette Records, at which point he changed his surname to James. The record became a number one success in July 1966 as a result of nationwide marketing. Soon after, Kessler and Pietro Pali were forced to depart due to a disagreement with Roulette, a label strongly linked with an organized crime whose boss, Morse Levy, was the basis for the Herman Hesch Rabkin character on The Sopranos. Eddie Gray and Peter Lucia took the position and McGuire left as well. Tommy James and his Shondells began by playing conventional rock and roll, but they quickly became connected with the bubblegum music genre. James denies this, claiming that bubblegum producers Jerry Kastnitz and Jeffrey Katz approached his record label in search of songwriting opportunities. Cassinets and Cats were rejected by Levy, so they moved on and found success with bands like 1910 Fruit Gum Company. The 1910 Fruit Gum Company's 1968 song, Simon Says, is widely credited with popularizing bubblegum. Tommy dislikes the term bubblegum for his music. Richie Cordell, the songwriter, gave them the number 4 single, I Think We're Alone Now, and the number 10 smash hit, Mirage, in early 1967. Money Money was a number three success for James in 1968. Money Money was co-written by James and Cordell. Cordell's writing partner, Bo Gentry and Bobby Bloom. This pinked at number three in the United States and number one in the United Kingdom in 1968. A flashing sign for Mutual of New York seen from James' apartment balcony in New York inspired the title. 
He followed up with Do Something To Me. James, on the other hand, was branded as a bubblegum pop musician, which he despised. As a result, he shifted his sound to psychedelic rock. The trio began creating songs in late 1968 with James and Lucia painting the psychedelic tinged hit Crimson and Clover. The song was recorded and mixed by Bruce Staple with James handling vocals and playing many of the instruments himself, and it included the inventive use of studio effects such as delay and tremolo. During Vice President Hubert Humphrey's presidential campaign, the band traveled with him. Humphrey expressed his gratitude by painting the liner notes for the Crimson and Clover CD. Other 1969 successes were Sweet Cherry Wine, Crystal Blue Persuasion, and Ball of Fire. They also wrote Sugar on Sunday, which was subsequently recorded by The Click. As the band adopted psychedelic sounds, they were approached to perform at the Woodstock Festival, but they rejected. The band lasted until 1970. In March of that year, after a concert in Birmingham, Alabama, an exhausted James fell after exiting the stage due to a drug reaction and was pronounced dead. But luckily, he healed and chose to relocate to the country to relax and recoup, leaving the band behind. His four comrades continued under the moniker Hog Heaven for a brief time, releasing two albums, one self-titled on Roulette Records in March of 1971, and the second was recorded in 1971 but was unreleased until 2008. They dissolved shortly after, though. James composed and produced the number 7 hit single, Tighter Tighter, for the group Alive and Kicking as a side project in 1970. James began a solo career in 1970, yielding two significant successes over 10 years, Dragging the Line in 1971 and Three Times in Love in 1973. Later in 1970, James went solo and recorded his first two albums on roulette. Tommy James in September of 1970 and Christian of the World in October 1970. He went on to have two more Billboard Hell 100 top 20 chart successes. Dragging the Line, which was co-written by Bob King, reached number 4 in 1971 and Three Times in Love and I was wrong. It was 1980, not 1973. What was I thinking? It reached number 19 in 1980, as well as 11 considerably less Hot 100 charts that were not as big as those two. They were below the top 20. James has won RIAA certified gold single in Hanky Panky. He also pinned and produced Alive and Kicking's million selling single Tighter and Tighter in 1970. Like I said earlier, that was also co written by Bob King. When a mob war broke out among New York's organized crime groups in 1971, James went to Nashville on the advice of friends and threats were made against him because of his relationship with Morris Levy. My Head, My Bed, and My Red Guitar came out in January 1972, an album he made with renowned Nashville musicians. It earned critical acclaim but did not sell well. He departed Roulette Records in 1974 and two additional albums, In Touch, that came out in July 1976, and Midnight Rider, January 1978 were released on Fantasy Records, with a third album, Three Times in Love, released in late 1979 on Millennium Records. In the summer of 1990, his Hi-Fi was released by the indie company Agus Records. Over 300 musicians have recorded variations of James' songs so far. In the 1980s, three of James' songs were covered by other artists and charted in the top 10 on the Hot 100. The last two I'm going to mention were number one hits. Joan Jett with Crimson and Clover, Tiffany with I Think We're Alone Now, and Billy Idol with Moni Moni. After 37 years, James and the three main members of the original Shondells reunite at a New Jersey studio in October 2008 to record again. Peter Lucia unfortunately died in 1987. I Love Christmas was the album that they recorded. Me, the Mob, and the Music, his autobiography was published in February 2010. James revealed that negotiations were in the works to make the narrative into a film and a Broadway play. The film is being produced by Barbara Defina. When James first met Morris Levy, the head of Roulette Records, it was clear that Levy was prepared to bully people when required. Those who joined on with Roulette were there to make money for the firm, with their needs fulfilled only when it sued Levy. To survive, people under contract to Roulette had to find a way to generate money that did not include the record label. 
such as individually arranged tours. While a roulette musician had complete creative authority when recording for the firm, the lack of compensation for their work was tough to accept. James believes the firm owned him $30 to $40 million in unpaid royalties. Roulette served as a front for organized crime as well as a money laundering enterprise because Levy was linked to the Genovese Scribe family. Roulette served as a front for organized crime as well as a money laundering enterprise because Levy was linked to the Genovese crime family. In the early 1970s, the Genovese gang was embroiled in a brutal gang war with the Gambino family, which claimed the lives of not just mobsters, such as Levy's close friend and business partner, Thomas Eboli, but also non-mob people on the outside of the organizations. Levy had developed a fatherly interest in James and was concerned that he might become a target for those seeking to get access to the Genovese family through Levy. So he advised Tommy to depart New York for an extended length of time until the war was finished, and that was when he relocated to Nashville, where the Mafia had little to no influence. And like I said, he started making country music in 1971, and the reason why his autobiography did not come out until 2010 was because all the people who were closely engaged with the record label did not die until 2010, and he didn't feel comfortable releasing it with someone that could perhaps murder him or do some harm either way. But only after the sale of Roulette Records and Levy's Big Seven music publishing firm, the music publishing company to Windswept Pacific Music, did James begin to earn substantial royalty checks from record sales. James began hosting the weekly radio show Getting Together with Tommy James on Sirius XM radio channel 60s on 6 in February of 2018. And James may also be spotted on late night infomercials for Time Live selling Woodstock music compilations. And that's what happened to Tommy James and the Shondells. Thank you for watching. If you stayed this long, like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Let me know who should I do a video on next. I'll see you in the next video.